So, dude, what have you been doing these days lately? <laughs> Suffering. <laughs> really? In the heat. Yeah. <laughs> That's very hot. I've been in Mexico like two years almost, on and off. And, of course, it's really hot there. It can be like 38 42. Yeah, yeah, that's a different like magnitude than here. Yeah. Oh, this is like this heat wave in Finland. Exactly. It's pretty like uh, at the limits of mine at least. I came here like two months ago, and I, 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 I was really surprised how green it is here. I, I don't okay. remember like this. I'm like, is this that green? Right. Because it's pretty gray in there. So. Yeah, the sun has been burning so. Much. Yeah, the cac- the cac- they have cactuses and palm trees and stuff, so they don't yeah. have greenery really. Yeah. So it was striking to see the green. Now it's, it's the same, but when I came, I was, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you've been now in Finland for a while? Two months. Two months. Two and a half months. Yes. All right. And you're going back to? I go back on the 17th next month. I have a first gig on the 20th. Okay. <laughs> what what kind of a gig is that? There, there is, the, every, day, every, every time it's the same, this is Stratovar songs, pretty much. Yeah. And, and with local musicians. Right. And because I know those songs, I've played them like thousands of times. So to make it really yeah. interesting for me, I, I tell them to make a set list that I don't, I never know okay. what's in there on the, on the, uh, on, on stage. And, and, and sometimes they put songs that I've never played live, only in the studio. Like once, one okay. was from episode this, uh, uh, was it learning, learning to fly? And that has a lot mm-hmm. of, uh, also, this <laughs> tough stuff. Yeah, I played that song 95 in Finnvox right. the last time. Never played it after that. Right. <laughs> but that's, that was challenging. But I like to play it because the people are still there, you know. So they come yeah. to see. And, yeah. So they, they can pick anything from the wall cutter, like where you've been yes, involved. Yes, exactly. In, in that's the, the thing. Race. Yes. And I don't rehearse with them. I just go like 30 minutes before the show. Okay. <laughs> Sound check. I don't even do that. Okay. Somebody's doing that. Yeah. Right, right. So is it like uh, you have some kind of tour and is it with the same same musicians or does it change always? Like It varies. I mean, Mex- in Mexico, it's mainly the same guys. Okay. But that varies too. You never know really. It's yeah. mainly, it's always the locals. So yeah, local guys. So you, you've gotten to know quite a lot of new people. Yes, a lot yeah. in the last two years. I mean, I've been there first time we were there like 21 years ago with right. Strato and... and I remember we were landing to Mexico City and it's, it's huge. We watched yeah. this like millions of houses. We said, is this what it is? Right. Mm-hmm. So I've been all over that country in the last 21 years. Yeah. Really, like, really. And it's a big country. It's like 120 million people. That's right. At least you mentioned you saw those that my uh, drum studio on the on the YouTube. What, yes. were, what were your initial thoughts of that? When you I like the sound that? because yeah. you never know. I mean, the drums, drums are like, the engine for me yeah. in music. So I always, that's what the first thing I pay attention to if I listen to some, if it's metal. Yeah. And if it's not powerful, if it's not clear. Yeah. If it sounds like wooden box, yeah. you know, yeah. when often does. Yeah. For example, I heard this, uh, this KK Downings, this priest, yeah. whatever this is. And the snare is horrible. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't know what is in there. Yeah. I mean, it's like a box, like a yeah. cardboard box. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think also like at least well, some might say that I'm biased because I'm drummer, but I think the very like a uh, defining part of like what makes a good sounding record, the drums is yeah, like so it. it's so dominating to like that wall like yeah yeah. I clarity in metal everything. it's clear that you build around that yeah you build around that so. right right. Uh, what's your thought about what's the most important thing about like for example when when you are recording drums what's the most important in that to get a good sound. Yeah, obviously. But, but to get good sound, what are the basically the some of the yeah. most crucial things? I think the acoustics is very important. Yeah. Because where you place the drum kit, that's the thing. It's gonna sound like that. Yeah. You know, if it's a wooden, if it's concrete, if it says glass. I mean, ideally ideally it would have to have all of these things. Concrete, wood and glass. Yeah. Then it's really good. Right. Depending on the material too. If it's slow stuff, it cannot be very boomy or lot of reverb from the room but if it's yeah. if it's uh if it's li- really low stuff uh, slow stuff then you can have that and maybe you should yeah you know concrete is really good then for drums okay but fast stuff concrete is not good okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah in, in strato you you had this I, I think at least 
what my impression is that in the when you when it uh, when York Michael came to the band yeah. for the for the 95 94 yeah was the the episode album yes did something like change in the way you mix the drums or like do that because I think at least to me that sounds very polished yes it is polished the biggest thing is of course Carmilla came to okay. the production of that and and Tete right. Oxala recorded that actually, okay that episode album but that was God bless him because he's dead but that was really tough because he was not really interested in that he was like not really there so the way he might because we always use this Finvox Studio B which is like 120 square meter room with wooden floor and there's glass and there's concrete right. so okay. everything is there right plus you can manipulate the acoustics with the, with the wall panels too so you can make it yeah. song by song actually All right And then he just recorded the kit, and I remember he was using like ten microphones to my my amplifier, and he put it to the put it to the SSL, and then he was combining like, and I'm like, this is not the way, man. It's not the way. <laughs> But what can you say? Yeah. And then when Carmila got the, the the tracks to mix, because it's only analog, that what there was no Pro Tools still '95, so right. It's just he complained heavily about the guitar sound. I remember that. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much you, you can't do much afterwards, you know. Yeah. Of his like he he had this selection of uh microphones, but yeah, none, none of them were satisfying to him. I mean, because he combined them already, so it was finished. Okay. I mean he maybe put six ah. mics. Okay, they were then... all basically present to some like uh, extent. Yes, exactly. Okay. So I guess also like when you were talking about the room, about the concretes and things, then the like a room mics become like the essence. Yes. To capture that. Again, it really depends on the material. You know, if it's mid-tempo slow, you can have very nice room sound. If it's, if the room is nice. Yeah. If it's not nice, you don't even want to try. You know, why bother? Okay. But we used a lot of mics. I mean, we used probably like close to 30 mics to the whole drum kit, maybe more. Okay. But just you listen to the room and you go where it sounds good and you put a mic there. Yeah. The yeah. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. To find the room, yeah, the best spots. Exactly, and I always record it uh, with the stereo mic from the like maybe five meters of, from the kit. Right, right. The room and from room. the behind too. Okay. From yeah. behind too. So there needs to be space behind basically. Yes, drums. I mean the drums were in the middle, so in the, of yeah. the room. Right, much. right, right. Yeah, that would be a luxury. For example, in my in yeah, our yeah. rehearsal space, like this, right away the fucking like a yeah. wall behind there, and then like well, at the moment in the in the in my that studio thing, it's like there's one one room mic in the right. left kind of corner okay. side. You don't need to have the space always. I mean, mm. if you have a good room, a good kit, I mean, you, and yours yeah. sounds very good. Yeah. Also in that, so yeah, appreciate that. You know, the the snare is re- really important. Yes. Yeah. Because many people use a lot of damping, you know, in the drums, and I never use any damping. Yeah. If there's any damping, I take it out. Yeah. No tape, no nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. To me, it's, it's an acoustic instrument. To kill that is yeah. contradiction in terms. Yeah, there needs to be basically certain kind of like a breathing. You gotta tune the, of course, the drum. Course, it has to be yeah. in tune, yeah. and and, yeah. and then it's it should really like ring in a very pleasant yeah. way. Yeah. Exactly. That's also one of those things. Like uh, in our rehearsal room space, like at first, sometime uh, we try to basically put a lot of dampening to the walls and also, I think, upper side. But yeah. basically, it then kind of killed the liveliness. For it example, kills. of the toms, it, the ringing, it needs to have the air. Exactly, there. and it kills the high frequencies. Yeah, it kills yeah, yeah. those. Yeah. So that it's the air around yeah. the drums. It kills that right away yeah, because yeah. the drums are not meant to be recorded in a dead space. Yeah, yeah, it cannot. To me, yeah. you cannot do that. I agree. That. If you don't have to, of course, sometimes you have to. Yeah. The, I think the downside in our place basically is that, uh, that for me, especially now, I have a little bit like revised my hitting technique and also have now a metal snare. And I okay. basically have the rim shots kind of like always. Okay. So it's very fucking loud yeah, because of that. So I think because it it's a small, small space. So that's the downside. Well, drums of that. are loud. I mean, they have to be. And they are, yeah, unfortunately, kind of. I think Jörg Michael's drum snare was like 120 decibels yeah so it's like take off of a jet yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to have very proper like the isolation of the in and exactly. things like this. i think for me the most really one of the biggest and the most important things regarding drama is the, is the balance yeah of the drama yeah then you don't need you don't even need gates 
yeah. anywhere. Yeah. You know, if you have a good balance in yeah. But there are many drummers who will like and then, ah, da, 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 da. Yeah. But then it's not balanced. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then you do this and everything comes from the snare. Yeah, it kind of easily eats. Yes. It eats the eats the kind of like the, the tone. That's at the moment in those mixes which I have at the moment. There I don't think there is any any gates. So so there is yeah, a lot of, there is a lot of a lot of bleed. Yeah, it, there can be, but if yeah. it's balanced, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, it would be good to have basically, of course, like in for example this fina box which you were talking, it's a big yeah. space, then like even though you have these hard surfaces, the because there's so much space, it's not so loud for the drummer. And in a proper, like a bigger studio, but in this small space, it's like quite loud. So. It works is 500 euros a day, so you need yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, but now, fortunately, I got the like uh, again the I remolded my like these, right. these in ears, so now I'm finally happy to have a, like a proper monitoring because the monitoring is so key to like to have the right yeah, balance yeah, of, of the clicks and things like this. You know that for me, if if I have to choose to spend more time in a less ideal space i i would choose this to the one day in finvox you know yeah. because that is really the, the time is the yeah. key yeah time is gold in music you know you have to have that and yeah until it's perfect you gotta do it and there are many ways to do it of course yeah you know, to produce a record i think another like a uh, really great sounding record from the stratovarius era of your time it was like the the and also the songs to me it's one of the, like strongest Albums, the Infinite, yeah, Infinite album. Was that also recorded in the Finnish? Yes, everything, everything, except, except all, the all vocals. Time. Vocals were okay. recorded in Hestholm, in like a summer camp place for okay. kids, where with the demos too. And um, that album was really positive, you know, because for me it's always where I am in my life at that point, and the songs will reflect this. Right. And Infinity was very positive. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Pretty big sound yeah like that but nothing is different every record is pretty much the same after oxala so visions yeah. you Destiny. found the... we found the way and the yeah. thing is we had we used a lot of the soundcraft spirit 16 track analog mixer for the drums and guitars yeah. next to the ssl okay you have this million euro desk in studio b and then this small 16 track soundcraft spirit with carmela owned this okay and it tracked the drums through that right and in the studio owner, this Risto Hemmi, he came and said, what is this? I mean, why, why don't you use this desk? Because SSL is very ne ne neutral. It doesn't have a character of its own. It's really what you put in there comes out. Yeah. Almost a digital. But this Soundcraft is making it sound really cool, you know, especially yeah. the, the EQ. Right. So we use that also for guitars. Okay. And everything was tracked through that desk. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Did you use any samples for the for the drums? Every time, every time samples. Yeah, I okay. mean it's always it's been always the kick is only sample. There's nothing. Okay. There's no acoustic sound okay. at all. And the snare is always fifty percent of sample and the right. natural. Right. So, and and the kicks were always from Alice's HR16B. It's like a black analog old uh, drum machine. Yeah, we used Monster Kick uh, tile tiled room and then later the Alice's D4 from that we got this stomp it's yeah. like a that's in Black Diamond that's in that's in every uh, double bass drumming song okay and then Big O is in case of Judas for example right that always the same sample varying song by song you know okay did you use also like the, these samples like on, on live did you have triggers when you were playing the live shows we used for kicks, but yeah, Jörg yeah. had like I think he had Lindrum. No, no, it was I have some 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 red stuff. I forgot what what was it. Uh, D drum. Yeah, D drum. He had yeah. D drum. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but they were basically the samples of those like albums which you also. No, used. no, they were from from the D drum. Are their own samples? Yeah, in the machine they had some okay. samples. So they were like kicks and toms also. Ah, uh -huh, okay. There was natural live. Right. Okay. Do I remember wrong? But wasn't that uh, the the Stratovarius, the black album, the Stratovarius, Stratovarius? Was yeah. that differently recorded to drums? Um, where was that? Did you record yeah, that same as himself? Yeah, that was different. He recorded himself. I was in a hospital, right. so I couldn't okay. be there. Okay. And he recorded the whole album in sound soundtrack studio in Pitayamaki. It's an, one okay. of these old. It's no old movie theater. 
Okay. And that's totally different sound. It's it's yeah. quite dead. I, it's I, only wood. I happen to like it. Fuck it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sound. Yeah. Yeah, because that was also, I mean, all the drums I put through PA in Nosturi. Okay. So I go there with Proto's laptop with, with, with all the drums and I put kicks, snare and toms through this PA and I record the room from different places. So simulate okay. the kind of cool. the, yeah, the whole album is like that. Right. That's why you get this, like the kick is like, it's like, it's the room. Yeah. So yeah. The, especially the, was the Jötter Dammer room, Jötter Dammer, was the, exactly. the scene is rising like song. That's, yes. that's like a, I just happened by mistake hear it sometime at a rehearsal room from some playlist. Yeah. And like uh, the drums on that are massive. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like are. it's I've I've actually used it also as like kind of like reference, reference. sometimes okay. to say like I want this kind of like big drum sounds. Yeah, right. I mean that was also that every tom is a sample from Tommy Lee's toms. Okay. <laughs> and every sample <laughs> nice. is is inserted manually. Yeah. So I okay. you know I, I do it at home. I had a studio in Palkanent. Yeah. I had a SSL 4000 desk. Okay. I bought the desk for right. the advanced money. It was like 80,000 euros. Okay. And that's the only re- record done there except one thunderstorm. Okay. So then I, I was, um, I took it home and in the evenings I was inserting tom samples. Okay. And you can count how many, and every time yeah, yeah. you hit the tom, it's me as well. Fuck. That's, a, that's a really good job because I really love those toms. Yeah, you gotta like... do that. It's, you gotta work hard to have a good sound. So. Yes. Then I did, and yeah, and then it was mixed on that studio too. So. And also the playing on that on that song for me, I really yeah, love yeah. love the way Jörg played those those drums. That's like a perfection. Like I wouldn't change anything. Exactly. I don't know how he did it alone. Yeah. Though I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, we have some footage where he's in the studio alone, okay. like yeah, playing to a click. Yeah, yeah. not even a guide guitar. Yeah, yeah, only having Germanically put the arrangements to the paper and then yeah. going through that. And Jens yeah. was there. As well. Okay. It kind of sounds like that he. I don't know how meticulously he chose, but like those, all those hits, I just love them. It's like a great performance. Yeah, he's there. very vibe oriented guy. Yeah. In drumming, I mean, he was always going for that. And he's not that technical, but he's more like energy and energetic vibe oriented drummer. Sense of style. That's yeah, the, exactly. that's the key. He's like a sophisticated Ulrich. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially on that track, like super playing, yeah, yeah. Like I, it's it's really enjoyable, uh, enjoyable listen. And I think it's similarly, especially these big songs, I like the way Jörg played. Like for example, on the Infinite album as well, the Infinity song, and yes. like those, like that's yeah, that I, as, I really as like a song that. because it's it's very simple. I mean, my music yeah. is simple, so then yeah. it's easy to have a good sound. You know, I mean, we have this not yeah. so or easier at least. It's easier, yes, yeah. exactly, right. Yeah, and the playing has to be just spot on to support the song and like uh, exactly. on those albums, like great job, Jörg. <laughs> yeah, they're actually, I mean, the thing is that when I compose the songs, I use the same HR, HR16B drum machine to, to record drums to, for the demo, like yeah, yeah, yeah. patterns and stuff. Yeah. And many times he used those. Yeah. Tom fills. Okay. That I programs. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes not. Good but, job. Yeah, but I told him that, of course, as a producer, I want his input. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I don't want yeah. to tell him what to do. I yeah, don't right. have to tell him what to yeah. do. But like, I think it's like uh, the key is like it doesn't matter how, as long as you get the best result. That's the exactly. Who cares how it's done? <laughs> no, no, I don't care. And and he recorded most of the albums in one day, all okay. the drums. Yeah, so. that means basically that he has prepared also a little bit. Yeah, as a German, they are like that. You know, yeah. They really are like that. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And I, I do also like, like for example, the the Dream Space album with, yeah. with Tuomo Lassila yeah. on drums. That Lassila was really, totally really good. different kind of drummer. Yeah, totally, sure, sure, totally. for sure. But on that that record, I really like the heavy metal drumming he did. Yeah, and it's still, I think, considering that it's so, was it ninety or something? Ninety four, like? it came out. So ninety three recorded. Okay, right. In the same studio, soundtrack, like okay. Black Album. Yeah, the drums were recorded. The yeah. drums were recorded in in some weird place in in I think in. Uh, Pitresk or something in the countryside. Ah, uh-huh, okay. I had this uh, Fostex 16 track, okay. analog recorder, and everything was recorded with that. Right. <laughs> yeah, I like those. Like very good, like uh, composition drumming wise. Those like yeah, good, he, great, great feels and like yeah, good beats. I he's really like. Very, that. He's very progressive. So, you yeah. know. but was there something? At least I have some kind of recollection that there was like a, also Sami Kuapamaki doing some. Yeah, because some parts. he had 
Plus, he had some stress injury in, yeah. in the arm, in right? The, in the finger, so right. he couldn't play. Yeah. And he came up with this brilliant idea: if he would play the kicks, and Kuop Kuop Pamagi would play everything else, I okay. said, that's just going to work. <laughs> and I'm what's not going. I'm not going to do yeah, that. It's no way. So then he, I think he plays four or five songs, and it's mentioned in the right. booklet. So right. I think he played Eyes of the World. He played um, Hold On to a Dream, Chasing Shadows, and Shattered. So four. Okay. But they were basically his like a drum compositions, which then Kuopis was. Playing. No, no, it's totally Kuopis. Ah, okay, he came up with yeah, those parts. Yeah, well. Okay, those. All right. cool. All right. I don't know how he plays the shatter, shatter at the end. I don't know what is in there because it's really weird feels in there. I don't right. know how he did it, but he's a right. brilliant drummer too. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I've been mean, blessed to work with these great musicians always, yeah. singers too, and yeah. you know, that's really cool as a yeah. producer, you, you know, it's easy, you know, just stay and yeah. Right, right. capture. Yeah. I think the first time I saw you guys, well, it was the first time I saw any Metal Geeks was basically, I think, in 97 Numerok. Were you in the 97 Numerok or, or just 98? It could be. It could be Visions. I think we were there. Yes. It was the when Megadeth was playing in yeah, the, yeah, 97. We were also 95. Yeah, episode and 98, I think. I think so, yes. Yeah, do you have any recollections of those like 97, 98, Megadeth and Dream Theater times? Who were I playing remember Scorpions, so? maybe it was 10, 97. I think it was, yeah, maybe something. There like were Scorpions that. playing the yeah. main stage, okay. We were before okay. them, we were after them, actually. We were bigger than Scorpions, yeah, <laughs> right, right, yeah. And also, I, th- I think Tarot was also playing on, on both 97 and 98. Yeah, we played in many same places with yeah. those guys, yeah. Uh, That's the funny story because I was, and I still am a huge fan of Tarot, especially yeah. uh, uh, Spell of Iron and Follow Me in the Madness. And I go, they played in Shadow Club in Helsinki, and I wanted to meet Marco. So, yeah, okay. Chaos Mattila, this guy from from uh, Rumba, was doing an interview. So I go there with my records, and so where is he? He's right there. <laughs> I didn't recognize him. Okay. He was sitting like this. All right. I didn't recognize how he looked like, in, you know, in nature. Yeah. It was funny. <laughs> And then he, the, it was follow me into madness that time. So okay, yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, Beku passed away though. What a great happens, drummer yeah, as well. It happens. A great he guy. Had, his balance was kind of weird because he hit the cymbals really hard. He hit well, everything it, fucking hard. I think so. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, too, but it worked. Perfectly. Yeah, 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 I think so. Like really spot on. Like yeah, those records are really great. Yeah. You know. But then they took like more like Black Sabbath, Aussie kind of whatever this direction. I, I didn't like that so much. Okay. I remember talking to Marco at some point because I really liked the kick sound. Okay. I asked him, how do you do this? And he told me. So. Yeah. It's a big kick drum and no damping. Yeah. No okay. damping whatsoever. Okay. All right. That's the way they got that sound. Yeah. Yeah. Kindre was definitely a great drummer and great character as well. <laughs> I met him, of course. I met yeah. all those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Many times. Yeah. There's great footage of the, on that on the Tarot DVD, the, the okay. extra which we put there, like to the <laughs> of the Numerok stuff. He's like beating those symbols and like uh, sticks are breaking and, really? oh, and yeah. like things like. I this. remember him like that. Yeah, I saw them many times live. Yeah, right, right, many, many times. So like one of one of my um, uh, biggest drum like heroes or influences, Uli Kush played mm-hmm. played also yeah. on your Symphonia yes. album. How how did that came to be? I Hold think. Them. Matos was first. I mean, he asked him the first because right. he was living in Sweden. And then I think it must have been through Edel, the record company, got me the number. No, because he was in Norway. So Yari knew him, the bass okay. player. Yeah. Yari knew him. And so he asked that that, that was the connection there. Right. So it clicked really easily. Everybody was same, at least in the same continent, Scandinavia. Yeah. Right. So I figured if the Brazilian guys in Sweden, the German guys in Norway, and me and, and Harkin, <laughs> Yari was also in Norway. So me and yeah. Harkin were the only one who were in Helsinki. Right. At least everybody's in Scandinavia, so it's easy to get them to Helsinki to record. Yeah. Stuff like this. I mean, the, the sessions were so easy with him. I mean, there was no reason to edit even, nothing. It was yeah. totally in grid. Yeah. Just some... some uh, difference of opinions in the ballads because he played some triplets okay and i said this is not accepted yeah. you know i I, I, can't, I can't have this man and yeah. it was like a joke actually for him okay <laughs> you, you have a joke <laughs> <laughs> it's like triplets in the ballad okay yeah. and he was a funny guy he was a 
I remember it, it was in Sweden, in Varberg, some studio we recorded those drums. And yeah. It was a big room. So I put the same thing. I put a lot of room mics in there. Right. And, and he was very, very picky about uh, monitoring his cans that I remember. Yeah. Especially kicks. And it had to be like... Yeah, the, the right way. balance. Exactly the right. right. It was like a little bit more, 10% yeah. more of the right. Yes. And, and it does really make a difference. Ah, yeah, yeah, of course. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So he... Um, it was a funny guy. I remember that. Right. Yeah. And then no problems whatsoever. Yeah. But he had this idea that he doesn't want to play anymore because he was... I guess he was tired of playing in the shitty places and touring. So he was just wanted out at some point. You know? yeah. he, made, he played the record, no problem. And then he just didn't want to go on tour. Okay. He just didn't want to do that. Anymore. Yeah. So I understood. And I think he's working on a factory or construction site. All right. I don't think he plays anymore. Yeah. He yeah. chose this. Yeah. Way. He was amazing. Like kind of like this machine gun drum, yes. drummer. Like he could, you can actually kind of hear on the some of the Halloween albums, like his feels and things. It's kind of like a exactly. controlled madness, but with really good taste. Yes, excellent. I mean, he was really, really sharp, really, really straight and, and really easy. Yeah. True professional. Yeah. So cool. No problems. Yeah, and I think he also wrote, wrote some songs in the Better Than Raw album. Yes, he wrote. He writes songs too. Yeah. So. Dark Ride. And he told me to write uh, like a, a song which is based on a Celtic melodies he had okay. he told me to do, so i wrote this okay. pilgrim road that's that kind of okay it's his idea like he told me verbally right and then i said yeah because those translate those celtic melodies translate easily to crowds they like they like that stuff there's something in that you know okay so i wrote that song what were your thoughts basically about about halloween like uh have you been listening to them a lot during your time so yeah listen i i I've, i saw them live 87 in giants of rock with, with right. Theo and it was keeper one yeah and then i saw them with keeper two supporting maiden in ice hall right. and when i heard keeper one i i i was surprised because i never heard that kind of stuff before it was really creative and brilliant yeah. those melodies and the drums and everything so it's big influence for me yeah you know? i yeah. think they are the originators of what they call power metal yeah i think like a I would say so too. Exactly. Kind of. I mean, with Stratowars, we took it further with a different kind of classical vibe. You know? Yeah. It's different in that sense. But of course, it, it really pays tribute to Halloween in many ways. Yeah. I really like the production, especially of the, I don't know, did you listen to the <laughs> Halloween's Better Than Raw album? No, like, I haven't been listening to Halloween for a long time, yeah. actually. I mean, I, I stopped when Kiska left. Okay. Yeah. That's basically much. when I came in exactly. and started listening. Yeah, yeah, that's completely different kind of... Yeah, it is. I do, like, I do like Time of the Oath. Yeah, I, I like album. the songwriting, but I don't yes. like the sound. Yeah. I don't think that is... Sound, sound-wise, sound that's not the great, but, but then like, uh, okay, songs are great, but then the better than Raw, to me, the s- drum sounds and everything, all yeah. the playing, I think also Kush did like... Uh, quite a few songs right. there and really like epic stuff like if you should check it out if you I like haven't. this Master of the Rings drum sound a lot I think yeah. that has a really nice high end uh, analog sound yeah. Yeah, and great that the new one doesn't have yeah, yeah. I the, mean, ne- the new analog- ones I haven't been basically I think at least to me when Krapov and Kush left to me something started a bit missing I see okay I mean again it's only a, it's really about the songwriting how good are the songs mm, yeah of course know? it doesn't of really course. matter that much but of course how the fans hear the songs. I mean, that's the key. And then, yeah. of course, Keeper albums are masterpieces. I mean, they, they yeah, are they really, are really good. I mean, so for that, of course, I mean, f- friend of mine talked to Tommy Newton, who produced those Keepers. Okay. And and he was telling Kiske that you sound like a Fiat in the morning that doesn't start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he, he said that Kiske got pissed off about the comment. Yeah. Uh, he never heard him before, so he's like, okay, that's... That's vibrato. It sounds like yeah. Fiat in the winter morning. <laughs> I also saw you posting on your Facebook page sometimes some Savatage stuff. What, yeah, are, yeah. what are you? Because for me, it's a great, like, a yes. very personal band to me. Exactly. I've been listening to them a long time. I mean, I, I love Hall of the Mountain King. I met Oliver, John. Yeah. And and got to ballet. And, and those two are, the, for me, the best. Yeah. I mean, I like Sirens too. But then yeah. when Jack Stevens joined, I think something was... Something was lost. I mean, I understand what happened, and they had to go. But the way the, the Oliver was, how how that voice is, yeah, 
how that guy sings. He has amazing sings. characteristics. You cannot basically replicate no. that. And I saw some live clips too, and he's better live even. He was better yeah. live. So I saw them like in 2009, I think. They were doing the John Oliver's Pain. Yeah, yeah. And once they started playing the Savatar songs after a couple of John Oliver's Pain songs, I was like crying and seeing yeah, all yeah, the yeah. songs. It was the exactly. It was you cannot beat that gig. Nothing can beat no, that gig no. to me after exactly. that. Like it was amazing. It was incredible. Like the song "Hall of the Mountain King," the power in his voice on yeah. that record, on that song. Yeah, unbelievable. And also the things, his weird sounds he makes from the throat. I don't yeah. even know how. Yeah. Nobody's ever done anything like yeah. that, even close. Right. So it's like amazing kind of depth and soul exactly. in his. And, and and energy, yeah, you know, yeah. The heart is high screaming, it's it's like emotion, amazing, like, incredible stuff. Exactly. So that is really important. And the guitar player too, Chris Oliver was really, yeah. really, really good guitar player. Original, really his own style. Yeah. Not totally. Totally. Too bad he went lost so yeah. quite early. It happens. You never know. So what about basically back in the day? With the like, if you're talking about like uh, this monitoring thing, which we were talking, were you doing like a uh, This old school kind of stage monitoring. I guess there wasn't that some at some maybe in the later years there was some like in ear monitoring. Only one to tour be. was elements was el- was in ears. Okay. Everything else was normal. Yeah. Normal monitors. You had to count on that everybody is able to hear some. Yeah, first somehow. of all, I'm really skeptical about any two technical thing on tour in to, on tour. I mean it yeah. never works. I mean yeah, I, I, a hazard hazard risk. Yeah, I had also the this ref- refrigerator racks in guitar. And always something was wrong. So then I got, I went to the so far. I just an amplifier head, one cabinet, and that's it. No, even not even effects, right? Just a good sound, and that's it. You know, yeah. not even channel, just one one sound basically. Exactly. Even the even the clean, I just got from pulling the volume down. Yeah. And then back. So the less you need to think about, and that takes away from the performance always. I remember because. These elements, I had really good amplifier, of course. Like normally, always it was always there. And then in the ears, I remember sometimes I, I this is something's really wrong. I don't I don't hear. It's not enough distortion. So I told my roadie, "What's going on?" I said, "You're imagining things. It is the same sound all the time." But right. to me, it wasn't. Yeah, something was wrong. And then I can't play if I don't like the sound. Yeah, you know? it's really difficult. Yeah. It does really affect yeah, yeah. so much of the, exactly. the performance. So that was that tour, and then never again after that. Okay. You know, never again. Yeah. Everybody hated it, but we had this backing tapes, you know, because yeah. there was yeah. a choir and, and the symphony orchestra, so you had to have that good monitoring. Right. So yeah. we had these molded earpieces and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess also maybe the, I don't know, maybe the molds have also, like, a, but I guess that wasn't the issue, that there wasn't enough isolation and things like no, this. No, it, it was, was just enough. A, It yeah, was just yeah. The experience was yeah, and the mixes. I had I had a good mix, but the other guys were always complaining. Yeah, they, their theory was that uh, the sound guy tried to please only me because I okay. was the boss. So yeah, then yeah. if the boss is happy, then he stays in the game. And the other one was yeah. always complaining. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> right. That was the one thing that I got tired of because everybody complained all the time, and I hate that. Yeah, when people complain, I really hate that. So yeah, I said that this never again. So all right. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Do you remember it? But like, I saw some YouTube clip. I think it was uh, Gods of Metal in Italy. Yeah. Do you remember that there was some issue? Was it about monitoring or some other like? No, it was Pantera issue. There was, really? uh, yeah, there was. Um, we had like six minutes left, and I started Paradise, and then they cut the PA off. Okay. Yeah. And I went to scream to the stage manager, "What's going on? We have time. We can see in the clock." Yeah. I said no. Yeah. And we later heard that this. This order came from the Pantera's management okay. to use the exact words, cut these sons of bitches off right. with the words. So I got so angry that I broke my guitar. Yeah. You can see it in the video. Yeah, too. yeah I think something yeah. like that happened. Yeah. We met the guys. They were super nice. So it was the management only. And then we, because as, as a revenge, as being Finns, we go to the sign autograph to the side. It's like 50,000 people. We go to the side of the, this area and everybody comes. And, and there's like no no people in the front of the stage when Pantera is playing. They come to us. We, we were more pop, we were more popular than them. Okay. And it took like two minutes. There's a car coming. Okay, guys, go. Okay. We couldn't even do that. So, right. It's this big American uh, management companies have a lot of power in this festival. Yeah. 
like Metallica and those. It was Black Sabbath was uh, the main band there with Ozzy. Okay. What, which year was it? 99. 99. 99. Right, right. Yeah. So that was the Pantera issue. Okay. We call it. Yeah. You also did quite a lot of like uh, uh, visits in, in the Jyrki, Jyrki TV show. Yeah, there were a lot of visions, especially 97. Yeah. Did actually bands get even paid for doing those? Or was we, it just for we exposure? We never got paid. Only for exposure. Yeah, but that was actually, it was a great exposure. Yeah, I though. think so. There were a lot of people there as well yeah. watching those things. Yeah. So. And we did give them gold disc for the thing. Okay. For Jyrki, so Visions right. gold disc. Okay. Nice. Yeah, too bad that Jurki doesn't yeah, anymore exist. I liked very much the thing, you know. We need to get it back. Yeah, I think. If, I don't know if it's possible anymore with yeah. this media yeah. hell. That's true. So, basically next time or next you are going to, to the to Mexico again. How long was that like a tour going to be? or like? A it's going to be pretty much, now I have, I think, around 10 gigs in Mexico. Then I go to Chile, there's two, Uruguay. Argentina, Paraguay, then back to Mexico, then United States, three weeks, and then back to Mexico, more gigs. So I think it's going to be like about six weeks of okay. solid touring, actually. Okay. And then back here for Christmas, and then go again back there. There's a full Latin American tour okay. in March. So right. the whole continent with Brazil and everything. So okay. This is just a warm up for that. Basically. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you, you've been doing also quite a lot of like albums or like some side. Yeah, I do I do solos and stuff and I, I do mixes too. So okay. you know, and and this is um I'm I got my chops having a demo studio in Hertonia before like I did like four hundred bands or something there with oh. my Fostex. So okay. That was really when, when I got this information how to do it. Very basic it, what, what works and what what doesn't work. Okay, so you have do you have that still? No, that was yeah. ninety two. Okay, so back 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 in yeah, the day. Exactly. Yeah, right, right. I had a fantastic studio in Hertone. I mean, was every, like I told, everything was white. Yeah. And the, the monitoring was perfect because that is really important. They measure, yeah. the guys measure the room. Yeah. And that was spot on, one one. There was nothing. Little, yeah. little, uh, we needed to raise a little bit, one dB of five kilohertz. Yeah. It was so important that, you know, what comes out is exactly how it's yeah. going to sound. Yeah. And that was really amazing because it was like almost like this, the room. Yeah. It was octagon. Shape. The size of the room was like this. A little bit bigger. Okay. But the, the shape was octagon, like eight. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, is it benefiting this room? This is not the, or either like square. It has yeah, it always like benefits it. because the, the sound reflects from the walls right. and the ceiling. So yeah. Uh, I have still to do a little bit of work on the on the isolation. Because yes. Like, a, like I need to put bass traps, for example. Yeah, the, it's kind of boomy. Yeah, that's huh? the issue. It's like work in progress yeah yeah as we that's some of the things that i i sense the sound in every space i go that's the yeah. first thing i i, do, I don't want to do that but it's in me so yeah, yeah. i start yeah. analyzing it okay yeah. this is like 250 <laughs> 70 60 i have this you know yeah but like you can it's a spectrometer inside of the head yeah yeah but it's 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 interesting like even i put this like quite cheap like uh foams I yeah could, i could immediately like the sound of the keyboard changed when yeah I was totally here doing. everything changes yeah. This is 250 room, I think. Okay, <laughs> right. Yeah. Here yeah, that's also, a bit hazardous, like a really crucial Exactly, for drums, you area. take it out. Yeah. Always this. And yeah. We took it out. Yeah, and, and in the mix, like a lot exactly. of things happening there. But yeah, but I my plan is to now basically get some like uh, bass traps, like I think likely made of rock wool, yeah, some yeah. kind of like uh, things. Like Phenomox has in the back wall, like two meters of rock wool. Okay. That's quite thick. Two meters, yes. Yeah. I'll fill this room. That's totally, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like behind the, the wall, of course. Okay. So that means because they want to have really totally neutral space. Yeah. Right. So the monitoring is accurate. Yes, exactly. It has to be accurate. So. Yeah. That is difficult to get. Somehow we manage in my studio, in this white studio, everything was perfect. Yeah. yeah. I think I need to get those bait traps and like a proper things. Then these just these are I think blocking quite nicely the echoes and like a reverbish kind of thing. But I then would there is this like this, but if you have money, I would put somewhere a little bit bigger room. And because I have some friends in Genelec and they are really good guys, so they measure yeah. this. And they yeah. you don't even have to pay so much money anymore yeah. for the stuff if you want to have that kind of thing. It's not that difficult. Yeah, I, well, my intention is like also like now deep dive more to the mixing of okay thing. and so 
I w- that is in my progress. It, it was already supposed to be happening like during the spring to get like those bass traps and right. like, uh, those proper ones in addition to these. Like these are a little bit more like aesthetics and just like a yeah, that this kind of, of thing. Yeah. That's why I would put the whole yeah and a thicker thicker thing to, yeah. to the ceiling. And some people use these pieces of wood in the yeah. back to, to yeah. absorb the yeah yeah right right some frequencies. So. Yeah. But of course, I mean these monitors are not good. So yeah. You should know that. Yeah, they are basically like a you know yeah, yeah. S- they are like uh, kind of like a studio monitors but not like a talking about rip off that guy's a rip off okay bearing okay yeah. I mean, you know how he does things he copies everything he opens something yeah, yeah. yeah cheap versions of yeah. like some and he's yeah. in the court fucking yeah. every week I heard oh, really? so, yeah. yeah yeah because they even look the same these are like Genelix of course yeah 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 right right unless it's the truth <laughs> yeah it's very far from yeah. true <laughs> <laughs> right. you forgot to put far yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But little by little yeah. making yeah, additions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. getting, I mean, these days you have fantastic plugins and stuff. So yeah, and also need to use then the like headphones and yes, and things like this exactly. to get like a more like a reference to yes. things. Yeah. Those universal audio have excellent plugins. I mean, you can even record through them. You know, you can EQ in real time. No yeah. latency. No latency. Right. So if you record drums, you can tweak like yeah. analog at the moment in my drum studio it's just basically direct sig- yeah. signal to the to the thing yeah, no, no like tweaking of the yeah, yeah. signal it depends of the again of the space i mean sometimes yeah. that sound is you cannot do much afterwards yeah but well I, maybe I'll, i hope we can go there yeah we'll check the it out yeah yeah it's a like a Work in progress. Yeah, like yeah. Little little everything little. is. Like, yeah, everything exactly. Is. Adding on top of and like right. hopefully getting better and better. Like it. I had so many studios that I got really tired of that crap. You know, yeah. so it no. takes also a lot of time to yes. like figure out what do you buy and exactly. what, and then get oh, it. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just into songwriting, and, and if I mix somewhere, I go somewhere to mix. Yeah, not my own place. Yeah. So right, it's yeah. much easier. Somebody yeah. has a really nice place, and you go there. And right, yeah, yeah. Then to yeah. establish your own because I I had. I think five studios in my life. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Professional ones too, with, right. with, with SSL. And yeah, as a busy man, I try to get everything here and little by little yeah, and, yeah. and getting better. Oh, it's a perfect situation. You live yeah. here, so yeah. you come exactly. here and work and then right, go right. out. And that is the idea to have things kind yeah, of. Yeah, I would love this way as well to work, have a little studio at home and to do mixes and stuff. Maybe someday. Little, yeah, yeah, little song, by little wrong, to songwriting. Yeah. Especially for songwriting. Yeah. A nice space, you know, nice nice really nice place for that because that environment is really important exactly for the, the vibe needs to be kind of like a inspiring and yes like a for me it's inviting. really important it's like really the most important thing right the studios are normally really alien to life yeah kind of places the energy wasn't because it's kind of dead you know there's no light yeah and Finbox has light yeah that's a good thing yeah windows stuff so. yeah. it can become like somehow too Cleaning and clean. Yeah, clinical. Clinical color. I mean, thing. that is a curtain there. Well, it's closed, yeah. so it's yeah. you, know, you have a window there. Well, yeah, because it probably affects the sound. Yeah, so. it's exactly. Actually, I know there should be coming from Tom and some like uh, sound absorbing curtains, which I'll be adding okay. on top of this as well. And we use molten a lot. Which molten, one? molten is like a, a fabric, okay. cloth, cloth like that, pretty much like right. that, but it absorbs. Yeah. sound so did you do any like do you have like uh, experience of this do it yourself like uh sound observers or like like isolation or like a, what is the acoustic panels kind of like do it yourself well? i don't do that i mean yeah. I'm, I'm very bad in that so i have yeah. friends who do that yeah. and they know exactly yeah. how to do it yeah. so. at least my impression is that rock wall should be doing quite good rock wall like is good for absorbing yeah, the, low, the bass, low frequencies. yeah exactly with thick yes. thick like levels yes like no i mean even in that in that small room we had like Probably at least this much rock full around the room, also in the bottom and in the ceiling. Yeah. Ceiling was this much full of rock wool. Okay. And about this much uh, behind every wall. Right. That's really to to that was that's why it was perfect. Yeah. The monitoring. So this was this was the Herton Yami yes. studio. Yes. Sahayan Katu. So that was uh, Studio Tolki. It's still in the, in in I think. In YouTube, there's you can see some Avalon clips. You can see how it is. Yeah. I was called Lin. Yeah. This they have this space, and and it was second floor, and it was really like uh, we used this. It looked like a cheese, but it was white. It just 
holes, panels. Right, know. right. And and then the guy puts this, this microphone, the sweet spot, and the Genelix, and then yeah, and then right. flat. I right, right. Totally not. I've never seen that. Even in Finnbox, I haven't seen that. Okay. Sad. Sadly, I had to let it go because there was no business for that kind of thing. You know, I did okay. Avalon Star. I did Alan Lander there. Right. I mixed Alan Lander there, and and, and then first to Avalon side it there, and some other stuff, but not much. How did you pick the or like what the what the actually the Alan? Uh, Lande, was it like their project or some like a... That's Frontiers. Yeah, some record company, kind of like a... Yeah, they did many Alan Lande's before, and then they asked me to do one, so I wrote all the songs. I played the bass too, and even keyboards and guitars. Yeah. So this was the, the Alan... Great Divide. Was it the that with divide. some facing, like... They track, always, track and so they always face. Ah, okay. Every <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing was that it's Jörn Lande and Russell Allen, and yeah. they were used to have this whatever the fuck it was that Russell had to have blue lyrics and, and in blue color and, and you're in yellow or whatever. And then okay. it was the, the other way around and they refused to sing before yeah. the colors were right. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So I had to go to the word program and reverse the colors. I re- this I remember. Okay. And there were some arguments with Jörn about the mixes because it's my production I, I decide of course as a producer mm. how I want it to sound but he sent me like a lot of tracks like eight or ten tracks and I said well Dio wouldn't need you know Dio Ronnie James Dio wouldn't need eight tracks of vocals it's like one really cool voice and that was like that I was kind of surprised that he was you know demanding these additional tracks to support Yeah. Which ironically takes it away because the more you put in there, Inverse the less it, impact yeah. it has. Inverse situation, it like it kind of like blends, blends exactly. It And then it was this ego kind of fights. Like I know something yeah. about producing too. He, he said, that. "Yeah, yeah." yeah. 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 Where those re- uh, that uh, Allen's? Uh, oh, sorry, your Landers vocals. Where they recorded in that studio? No, no, it was all they did it themselves on their own yes. in their homes, right? But yeah, I don't like to work with that way because I really want to produce, especially vocals. Yeah, Those to be guys, in the same space. Exactly. Mm. I mean, I really, I mean, it's really a progress of two people. Mm. But some of these guys are so big-headed that you couldn't even do it. So probably that was better that way. Yeah. I don't want to tell you in Landy how to sing because he knows how to sing, yeah. obviously, and, yeah. and Russell too. So, but I just miss this interaction in the studio, especially these days, because everything is about I send the files, man. I don't like that. I want to go there and I want to yeah. record it. Yeah, and especially I think like uh, if it's a new like a uh, band, you are, you don't have a long history, so yeah. you don't basically have that connection and understanding what you are doing first time doing it remote. It I think always quite... everybody contributes to the thing who is there in the room, the energy wise they put in, mm. you know, ideas and stuff, and mm. then a collective. I don't believe in this edit. You know, you have enough material, so edit, edit it together. I mean, there was a time when you actually played things. Yeah. It's like, I get it together, man. I get yeah. here and there, and then I yeah. put it together. Yeah. What's the music about at the end of the day? It was, if it's not about playing yeah. with your friends. Yeah, right. But some, I guess, they are, well, yeah, sometimes, and they are, like, some restrictions. Financial issues, yeah, as well, yeah. I mean, we always had this, every Strato album, we had everybody in the studio with basic tracks. Yeah. The whole band was playing. Yeah. Quite was singing, yeah. and then we just kept the drums. Okay, but yeah. the drums have the energy and, and the attitude of the whole band. Yeah, and it's easy to play on top of that. Right, but now it's like click and 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 drums. Yeah, and guide guitar. Yeah, it can take away from the experience. You need to like somehow. I'm still also in the in the bit like a learning phase of that to how to also really play with the click how much do i let it to like control me yeah yeah i think it, at least my impression right now is that that needs to kind of you need to be kind of like hearing it but at, yeah, at, the, forget, at the background you should forget yeah, the click. it's kind of like a helping you a little bit yeah, like yeah. there but you i think to, if you don't actually hear it you know you're in time yeah you need you need to basically i think you need to listen what you are playing like Well, listen. I'm I I'm I don't think so actually. I think okay. you you should not listen to yourself. I think I you think, should be in okay. the flow. Okay. Because when you think you will do something wrong. Yeah. If you because think the mind, yeah, you know, if you too much think about it. For sure. Well, I'm very extreme. I think if you think at all. <laughs> okay. 
I'm really into that. You're just you're in the flow yeah. of expressing yourself through yourself, whatever you have. And if you think, yeah. if you introduce the thought process, something because yeah. you are subconsciously at least yeah. preparing to fuck it up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. I guess you're right in that sense that that's like the optimal kind of thing. That is the optimal. Yeah. They call it flow. If you have it kind of like on automatic and then it works. Yes, but that's of course better in the actually in the band situation because you play a song. You know, I remember this Infinity song because it's my song, but I I always forgot this part of it. But changes the chords live. I remember thinking about it before yeah. like a minute before. Yeah. I know I'm gonna fuck it up, yeah. and every time I fucked it up, of yes. course, and it's my song. Right. So then, what did I did? I, I I wrote the chords and I put it on stage so I, I can. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yes. every every time it changes the chord, and I never for I never remembered those. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the basic point: is that I thought about it before. Yeah. And that's when I'm gonna fuck it up. Yeah. Thinking, especially like live situation, yes. when there is this kind of extra thing, then you are for yeah, sure gonna so. fuck it up. And also, many people ask me how you write songs, and and you know, there is no how. I don't know mm. how. I mean, I say with a guitar, and that's not the answer they want to hear. Yeah. Because if I I don't write anything with the brain, I don't think what I write. Mm. I never have done that. Yeah, it's it's a really uh, almost spiritual process for me. It's like I receive songs, and many of my songs, most of them, I write in ten to fifteen minutes. Right. So yeah. the only explanation for me has to be that it comes from somewhere. Yeah. Through me, and then because I've written complete songs. It just come out. I have yeah. demos. Yeah. You know, so then what is that? I don't have to analyze that, but that's the way it is. Yeah. That's of course. I, like I don't sit yeah. down with the guitar and think, yeah, I'm going to write this. Mm. And I've never done this. Yeah. You know? So music to me is not mathematical, it's emotional. Absolutely. And energy. And yeah, it, energy is really the key. You know, energy is the key. Right. Because we, have, we, have, we all have story to tell, you know. Every yeah. musician has a story to tell. Yeah. Every musician express themselves in a way or don't express. That's yeah. an expression too. Yeah. yeah. How can you express yourself if you don't even know who you are? You know. Yeah. That's difficult. And yeah. many people are really mechanical, you know, in studio and live. And I don't yeah. many bands don't interact at all with between the band members. They play in their own world. Mm. I don't see the connection. I don't see the collective energy. Right. That's the first thing I see if I go to some rehearsals. I say, yeah. what is going on? It's like, yeah. I think at least my understanding is or in the live situation, if it's kind of that happens, like then you are basically a bit worried. Are you even able to play it? So you're focusing on that thing, your own thing. Yeah, it's but that's, kind of, ego, that's yeah. ego problem. But it comes from a, like a issue, which yes. why you are like that, like rather than basically feeling the atmosphere and like exactly. being able to focus on or the have actual, fun. yeah exactly have fun and yeah. have the interaction exactly. connection with everything we had this gig in Vax on Saturday and, and the guys were like kind of nervous before the show because they never played with me and they never mm. played those songs and then I asked them why are you nervous what's the reason really it's every time the same they think they're gonna fuck it up yeah. <laughs> there's right. no other reason yeah that is and then the... I said so what then mm. fuck it up yeah. who cares yeah if there's a one guy or two it's music police, whatever is writing. This guy made a fuck up. So what? I, I fuck up all the time, and you never know it because mm. I don't show it. You yeah. know, I never like. Oh, I made a mistake. You yeah, know? I think yeah. It's it, the fear yeah. of fucking it up. Yes, that's basically makes you fuck it up. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah, if you just relax, you know, you see, you know, the songs anyway. You know, yeah. you rehearsed. Yes, there's nothing to be scared of, but it gets you. Yeah, it gets you. So you need to kind of trust the process, and I think. When you are, when it's time to play live, it's too late to it's start too late. worrying anything. About exactly, that. and also it's tough to not to care because it's internal. Yeah, you know, yeah. you cannot do it with will. You cannot say I'm not scared. Yeah, because you are. Yeah. So what do you do then? You right. know, because it's internal. It's inside of you the fear. Right. So it is you expressing your fear in that moment, but it's all about expression anyway. Yeah. Everything here. So. It is. Also, like that's why at the moment when we have this like a festival gig coming, like I at least I'm trying to rehearse so well that I'm able to just enjoy the yeah enjoyment. Like, that's the key. Yeah. I mean, I remember we played in Wacken to like fifty thousand people, and the intro is running, and we are behind the curtain, and I have no feelings. I'm like having coffee, drinking coffee. Yeah. I I'm not scared at all. Yeah. And and that moment, I, I realized I missed something because I just I go and play, and I know exactly what I'm going to do. 
it's boring, you know, it's super boring. <laughs> okay, so yeah. then that's why in Mexico I do these things like put a set list. I don't want to know what is in there. That brings excitement. Yeah, at at least. Because they look at me before the show, like, aren't you nervous? I'm, I'm not. I'm not nervous. And yeah. even many times happens that the, the amplifier breaks. Somebody's doing the sound check like 10 minutes before the show and they <laughs> no sound. Yeah. And I should yeah. be like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, I know it's going to be an amp. Because if there's no amp, there's no gig. Yeah. Uh, so they get an amp there and then I just go and play. Right. But I'm never scared. Not even yeah. nervous. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I've done more than 3,500 3, shows in 52 countries in my career. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a lot of... <laughs> have a little bit of routine. There. Yeah. I never forget this Mexico City when we went there like 2000. And we go to this hotel and then some guys are coming. You want to you wanna go to see the pyramids? I'm like... What? I mean, to Egypt? <laughs> we have a gig. They have pyramids there in Mexico City outside. Yeah, yeah. A tour, sun and the moon. I thought they want they go to Egypt. Okay. <laughs> you want to see the pyramids? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that yeah. kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also like of course, like what you said that like to you, of course, that's also pretty ideal situation like it might take you 10 to 15 minutes to write the song but of, yes. course, of course every like a band has their own dna how it works and how yeah, it's yeah. going to be done as long yeah, as it there is done. no rules yeah. actually exactly. there are no hard rules exactly. there are no rules at all i would say i mean yes. whatever works yes i mean it really is so but as as an artist i am completely into emotions and to express that in a song whatever it is if it's anger fear happiness sadness whatever is in there i always seem to write songs that are made from these four different things. Yeah. I think everything is, and if, if you analyze, I don't, but if you, yeah. and if you analyze like the Beatles, I mean, you see the structures of the songs and you go straight to chorus, which nobody did before them. You know, they go, can't buy me love straight to the chorus or help straight to the chorus. Mm. And I'm a music lover. I listen to a lot of different kinds of music. I have over 600 songs in my playlist in Spotify and, it's you would be surprised to have that because it's yeah. it's it's not metal actually only yeah. at all so right. i like songs i like good songs i like good productions i really love that stuff and mm. i see myself going more and more into songwriting maybe even pop music because i really love that that kind of stuff you know yeah good melodies good productions nowadays it's easy to do as well at home you know mm. especially the songwriting yeah right I mean, I had a hybrid studio that, that last one. It was like rack, you know. It was Pro Tools, but it was uh, really well. It was I had this DigiDesign Pro Tools interface, but it was doctored in the States by the Black Lion Audio guys, which are like originated from Matt Lange, his hysteria developer, Matt uh, Shania Twain guy. Yeah. And they like uh, they recapped everything. They changed every fucking component. Or like three thousand euros. For like 16, everything is changed. And it's so analog. It's three-dimensional sound. Okay. When I put it, I was like, this is it, man. I don't need analog. This is this is analog. All right. So I paid first like maybe 500 euros for the interface and then 3,000 for the recapped. Okay. I send it to the States and they send it back. Right. And just because I love that guy's production, this, yeah. everything is perfect. Yeah. You know, and it has to be a way they know. They even designed their own monitors. I heard. Okay. Right. It's just not good enough. So, so basically you are you have that thing. I had that, in you that, had it. Yeah. And right. you can still it's black lion audio, those guys. Okay. They recap stuff. They do it like they are really into analog sound. And those are really and uh, there's not sort of fake. Yeah. Because there's a lot of this, this oh this sounds so analog and then you put it oh, shit. But that was really three dimensional analog. Everything you put there was sounding great. You know, a lot of depth, a lot of detail in the Sonic palette. It's everything was there. Right. No matter how many tracks you have, 200, 300 Pro Tools tracks, everything was audible. And that was, for me, what I wanted to have. So that's why I paid for that money. You know? right. cool. yeah. And I would advise somebody who is into that stuff because you can emulate analog, but why don't you get analog then? I mean, you can buy the thing. Mm. You don't have to emulate yeah. anything anymore. Yeah. It's cheap. Nobody wants that anymore. But that was really good work, you know. Yeah. And I know he has like four of those digital okay. design stuff with Black Lion Audio. So because he has like four, five hundred track count sessions. 
Yeah. So you stack stuff. I mean, well. It's like, but then you start from like Queen, who was like in Bohemian Rhapsody, they have like 180 overdubs in the beginning. Okay. Only Freddie Mercury. Okay. And that was, I guess, 16 track uh, recorder they had. All right. So how do you do that? How do you, how the fuck do you do that when you listen to that intro? It's one guy. Yeah. 180 tracks. This, this, there, that's fucking amazing. Yeah. You gotta do like 12 overdubs, transfer them to one, then 11 yeah. to two, and then those two to right, one, right, and right. then again you have 12. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's the way to do it. <laughs> that's right. I use the same principle in my Fostex 16 track. Okay. So we did a lot of big choirs in this. We had all, all almost 200 tracks, choirs sometimes. Right, in the but, Strato yeah. album. Yeah, we had like four guys singing. Yeah. And then I used, to, especially in Black Album, I used this, what I learned, like Michael Jackson was doing that. You are in the mic and then over it up, you go a little bit different. You var vary the, the distance and, and uh, you know, from the mic. Yeah. So the guys go like 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters back, right, right, more back, more close. But then you get this airy kind of sound. We did a lot of that, and All right. we had Marco Hiatala on Visions singing back in vocals. I remember that. And yeah, we got him a gold disc, and he said, "Vito, oh God, Eli. He, <laughs> he said, <laughs> "I said, man, I mean, you know, you're gonna get it yeah. later." And then with yeah. Nightwish, of course. He, yeah. But now I understand him what he's doing totally. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. We gotta find the way in this madness. What's yeah. going on? So. Yeah, and you need to do it for the right reasons. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, you have to find a way in this madness, what's going on now in the, in the media and music, because nobody wants to pay money mm. for the music anymore. So I think it's going to be totally free at some point. But I'm not going to stick around to see that, mm. you know. I, I, I'm a professional musician. I get paid for what I do. So mm. I'm, I'm making my fourth solo record now, and that's kind of test... Because that's going to be out of Spotify and Apple. It's not going to be there. You know, I have my oh, okay. website, and you can download it, and you have to pay money. All right, like ten bucks for whole record. So you are not going to boot it to Spotify. No, those. okay, no. Hunting High Low has like fifteen million streams, and I get like two hundred euros from that. So somebody's getting rich, not me. Yeah, two hundred euros per year or something. I like don't this. know. I mean, the statements are ridiculous. Yeah, right, right. Somebody's getting that money, but it's not me. Yeah, yeah. But I'm the one who originated the track. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's why Hietala went away, as I understood. Yeah. He was tired of this ripping off artist thing. The originator gets the least from the cake. Mm. Then something is wrong. And then I just, I don't complain. I just do something else. I always have yeah. to find a way and I will. So whatever it is, it's just, from, in my case, it's very organic where I go, where I go, you know, in music. I will mm. always do that because I'm a musician. I was born to do this. Yeah. That I know. Yeah. I was three years old when I was uh, singing Beatles songs, my mother told me. Okay. And I, I, I just tested it. There's 100 Beatles tracks in Spotify playlist. And I can do 94 of those okay. with yeah. melodies and lyrics. Yeah. I can sing them. Yeah. I, I tried it. Yeah. And I even told my friend, you put any, I don't know what's coming. I can do it. Right. That's how I. That's how well I know this yeah. songs. Abba, maybe eighty-two from hundred only. Okay, <laughs> I can right, do right. it. Yeah. I will. I remember also like I think John Oliver's biggest inspiration was yeah. Beatles uh, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, you can hear that. Yeah. Especially in yeah. Ballet, you can hear that. Yeah. The okay. Beatles yeah. were like the masters because you cannot explain how two guys can write those songs in seven years, three hundred songs, more than three hundred songs. Mm. And Paul McCartney said in an interview that they never walked out from a session without a song. Yeah. Never. Right. Whereas I know that the ABBA guys, Bjorn and Benny, they had this thing that they were writing a lot of songs and then they said, this is crap. So we have to spend two weeks writing shit and then starts coming yeah. Dancing yeah. Queen. And, right. Just right. Like, you know. yeah. and those guys don't even know how to write music. They don't know notes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Benny Anderson doesn't know how to read yeah, music. Yeah. So I, don't, guy, I don't know either. <laughs> exactly. That's that's my point. Yeah. How the fuck do you write those hits, SOS, yeah. Dancing Queen, mm. and you don't know? It's just, ah, oh, it's nice. Yeah, if you, you need to just hear it, of course. Exactly. Like, like if you hear it, it should be 
doable. <laughs> that that guy said that you have to be in your working space to get it out because if you go and take a nap, there's like a dragon that comes out, and it comes out when you are not there. Mm. So you have to wait yeah. that it comes out, and then the magic happens. Yeah. But they spend a lot of time in this archipelago outside of Stockholm in the cabin in the woods by guitar and piano, writing two weeks of songs that they call crap. Yeah. And they said, when we get rid of the nonsense, then yeah. the hits come. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you got to just write and write and write mm. and write. There's no shortcuts anyway to anything in music. Yes. You know, you got to work and that's it. I mean, many bands are like, oh, we don't get anywhere. With Stratowars, we, we rehearse seven times a week in the beginning, every yeah. day. Yeah. 84, I remember, we're every day there. Yeah. You know, and I played eight hours every day in my room with a guitar for 10 years. Yeah. And when you put that amount of energy to someone, it's going to grow. I mean, you have Steve Jobs book in, the, in there. I saw that. I love yeah. the book. And I, he was yeah. like that too. I think he was really uh, thinking a lot. He was putting a lot of energy to certain things. And then it started to grow as it does, you know, like yeah. a flower. You know? Yeah. And you need to have the, have the passion. That's the. Yeah. Then, passion is then part it starts of, to come out. Exactly. Passion, passion is part of love, you know, and love yeah. is really important in music yes. and in life too. So when you have this and you always care because you have all these things here and, you know, I, I, felt, I sense this, that there's a lot of talent in this room, you know, and that has to be cultivated, cherished, you know, even protected in many ways because yeah. there are a lot of people here who are out there to just destroy things and are very, very negative. Yeah. You know, and I don't think you want to be in that presence yeah. because I, why do you, why should you, you know? Yeah. Right, right. Just tell it, well, I don't need this. You know? yeah. If you focus on your career and music, it's going to grow. That's fucking sure. It finds a way. Yeah. That's what I believe in my case. Even if there's no metal anymore, I will flourish in some area. Yeah. Maybe musicals. That's one of the things I, I, I see myself doing. Yeah. If you have the passion and you have a feel like you have something to say, and then you just say Yeah, it. I think it's really... At the end, it's really basic. It's it's the thing you want to express. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, gratitude is really. I'm mean, every morning. I'm grat grateful for a cup of coffee. That's the first yeah. thing. I sit there being like an idiot. I smile. I yeah. Have this. Yeah. It's good like, to sometimes like also like to fucking sit a little bit and take a time. deep breath. Understand what you have. All the time. Yeah. I tell to my friends, wake up in the morning, calm, look around. Yeah. What do you have? Are you thankful? You feel gratitude? Or you want more? Yeah. That's the thing, you know. And then you have a cup of coffee. So I can be a whole week with this every morning if I have. I don't need anything else. Right. I just need this cup of coffee. Yeah. You know, and then you feel gratitude for that and yeah. everything in the life. Yeah. Appreciation is is good, like a yeah. Because thing pe to have. people complain about numerous things, but you know, they gave the power away to start with. Mm. I mean, they don't have power anymore because they gave it away. Everybody here can be. You can be uh, the best version of you in life, and you should try this. I think you should go for that. Mm. How good yeah. can you really be? Yeah, yeah. you know. It's a long road, but th that's life. Yeah, that's where it starts from the decision, you know. And everything during the day has to then reflect this. Every yeah. decision you do. and yeah. I mean, music in life, how you treat people, you meet people. You need to be right or kind. What is the really yeah. important, you know. That's my philosophy when I yeah. think about life and universe. That I've asked certain questions and I got the answers to. So I don't need, yeah. you know, I know how they are for me. But I would never debate. Yeah, I yeah. would never say I'm right, but mm. I'm right for me. Yeah. That's enough for me, yeah. you know. That I know I'm, I'm guided in many ways here, and I see different things that I need to see, yeah. and the things that happen to me now are super cool. Yeah. And every day, I never know what's going to happen mm. because now you invited me here, and I said right away, yes, I want to do this. But I felt yeah. good. Yeah, exactly. The first feeling is the gut feeling, if yeah. it's good or not. Yeah. And I follow that, and yeah. I would call it almost destiny because I believe in that, you know. And when I see that, I take it. Like this Mexican trip is totally that. I I was meant to be there yeah. when COVID started because they I had gigs booked and they cancelled and I'm there. Yeah. And certain things happened in these two years that I had to go through yeah. personally to be able to grow. So that's that's really the that's really the thing.
What's metaphysical? Metaphysical is spiritual. Yeah, yeah. It's a spiritual. And how you how you think? Like I personally don't. Re- like, uh, well, I would like to. It's a romantic thought to have like a destiny, but like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't believe in it. There's too many like uh, coincidences and fucking chaos and things just go. But I would like to believe that there is some kind of guidance or whatever kind of mm-hmm. thing. But like, uh, but I just take. You can influence yourself how you think yeah. about things and like if you think it's true gratitude and love and have perspective that's so, true that's true, true, true like uh, yeah. having certain experiences in life yes. they teach you if you are that's really, willing to that's, listen. that's actually like me actually yeah. you know, but certain really bad things happen to me yeah. and then you sort of have to find some answers yeah. why why things are happening and then in the long perspective like I have 55 I see my life as a series of incidents that led me here that without those, I wouldn't be a musician, first of all. Yeah, yeah. And I would not grow. Yeah. I wouldn't do this. And yeah. And you wouldn't be the same, same, not same at, person. Like not you, at all. You need to have those. Or, I don't know, I do, do you need I don't, no, do you need to have them, but you, once you have them, you they will grow you yes. a lot. I mean, we have a lot of... I mean, religion is, for me, a really bad thing. Mm. I, I really don't like that, because it's controlling with fear. Mm. There's this parental punishment kind of thing in there. I, yeah. don't, I really don't think this is the, the way for me. And I've read Bible, I've read a lot of scriptures, I've read a ro- lot of books, and the more I read, the, the more I realized I don't know anything from the books. Mm. It's all in me. I think we all have this kind of spiritual DNA inside of us. All the information is in the body, such as the universe. We don't have to know. We mm. don't have to know, that's mm. the thing. Yeah. I don't have to know how this was created or if it was created. Yeah. I don't have to know this. I can enjoy the tree because it is there. Yeah. There's this movie called Pi. Have you okay. heard it? It's pie. like pie. It's like pie. It's just, um, and and um, this guy has to ha- explain everything mathematically in the universe. So he comes up with this fifty-six digit number that explains everything. Yeah. But he goes mad, and in the end he drills a hole in the skull, <laughs> <laughs> and he becomes cured. Okay. And the film ends. That the, guy, <laughs> the guy is sitting in the park, and the small girl comes with the with the leaf from the tree, I was like, I can explain this, you know, mathematically. And he just smiles, little girl, and it, the camera pans to the tree and it just injures the tree. Yeah. That's how the film ends. Yeah. But it's his quest of finding out things, how and why. Yeah. And I got it when I saw that ending, that's beautiful, because it's just enjoy what you see. Yeah. And you don't have to explain how it's there, yeah. why it's there. Yeah. You just like to see it. Like to see it. Yeah, I I agree, but okay. But then again, I'm super curious person. I want to know how world works, but like yeah. still, it I don't need to know everything. I can't know everything. There are so, laws. Yeah, yeah, we have laws. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, natural laws yeah. are existing. So right, and and the mind is like you know whatever you choose to do with it, it's gonna take you there. So mm. whatever you think is gonna happen, whatever you're scared will happen. Everything will happen. I don't know will they happen, but they will affect you at will least make it things. happen. Yeah, that's they the will thing. Affect things. Mine is really you. powerful. Yeah. If we all would send out, like you said, love and good stuff, energy out, we could heal the planet. Mm. If seven billion people would, you know, send out these yeah. thoughts yeah. consciously every day. Yeah. I'm going to do today only this, no negative. Yeah. Then we affect the collectiveness of, of the mankind. Yeah. That's what I believe in, and yeah. then. It's just that they say that when there is enough negativity in that collective consciousness, there will be a war mm. yeah. because it has to express yeah. Yeah. to get it even. Yeah. So there's a lot of anger here and a lot of negativity. If you complain, it's going to affect you mentally mm. and, and, and body too. You get negativity there. Yeah. It's energy. Right. Yeah. And then you get sick. Mm. It's so easy. But if you consciously spread out this loving energy, you're going to heal your surroundings. You're going to attract mm. good people. Mm. The idiots go out because they can't stand that. Mm. They cannot stand positive thinking. They cannot. Mm. They don't want to be in that mm. presence. I wish there was more like a open-minded discussion yeah, in, yeah. instead of like a like you know witch hunt kind of like. Yeah, if yeah. you say something which is not common in like a West, yeah, yeah, Western get, left mass media. You're gonna get, which is, yeah, exactly. So that thing, like, I wish that people would be willing to listen exactly. and like uh, 
try to figure out that we are all in the same yeah, boat and, and trying to get things exactly. better. But no, often it goes to that, that, yeah, that yeah. there becomes like this hateful and taking sides, yes. tribalism kind of thing, which is, yeah, yeah. to me, I, I think it's very dangerous. It's, that's it, also is, it is dangerous. It's also how wars happen. Yes, exactly. Like I mean, my Facebook is an open platform. Every, every, anybody can write there. Any can, anybody can post anything, yeah. everything yeah. they want. Yeah. Because it's like social experiment. Yeah. For me, that I see that what is whatever is in there, and then even the bacteria has a place in the ecosystem. Yeah. Even the bacteria has. Yeah. I tend to have like hundred comments, and then there's one negative, and I see just that. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, I pissed off of that one yeah. comment, but yeah. not ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. And that's ego. Yeah. That's pure ego. Nothing yeah. more than that. Yeah. And when it when the news is so kind of like uh, it's not negative. objective mm. journalism, yeah. it's like cherry picked right. things. Well, Einstein, you know what Einstein said about human stupidity. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he was still thought basically that mankind is so stupid, you know, and it is, it is f- factually, it is sure. But then again, mankind, like people in mm. general, they have the basic, like a tendency to be good, wanting, I li- wanting I'd like good, to think so too. wanting to do good. Yes, but it's just somehow lost in this way of dialogue and I think also media cherry yeah. picking and things, putting blame on people yes, and exactly. fear. That's how you get to control people. The blame is exactly because for example what's happening in France with the COVID pass and stuff. It's a, it's a liberty taking off from you know being a citizen. Mm. But you gave it out a long time ago this power. If Mexico, In Mexico for example, if 100 million people go to the street nobody can do anything. you know. Mm. And in Latin America they have been having this one euro races in the metro ticket and there's like a million people in the streets, you know, protesting mm. that. Yeah. And that is power, mm. you know, but that mm. they shoot their own citizens, but they cannot forever. Yeah. Because that's the people they really have the power if they real realize that, that they gave it out. And that's then we go to the whole system of society. That is controlling with fear, you know, money, mm. religion, family system, it's all that military. If that's taken out, there is no society. Mm. Yeah. And what's then? It's chaos. Yeah. Yeah. We are not ready for this as yeah. humanity. Yeah. You know? If you take someone like Gandhi, you know, yeah. who was like controlling masses with just non violence, he had like 100 people against 1,000, but not doing anything, just standing there taking blows. That's, mm. that's really true power, mm. you know, and you have this kind of thing. Mm. And he made Indi- India independent with this non violence. But that guy was a powerful guy, being non-violent. You know, yeah. He was totally yeah. against any kind of violence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You could hit him, you could kill him. He didn't care. How mm. the fuck do you fight that? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can't. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. You know, you make this group of people have the same ideology, mm. and we are we are against this injustice, but mm. we are not willing to do anything violent. Mm. Yeah, get this. Yeah. And and that worked. Yeah, yeah, that guy made it work. That's somehow. good that it also. And especially, I think that's what can work. Yes, exactly. I I'm a, I'm a nonviolent guy. Mm. I mean, I'm 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 not violent in any any way. Yeah. You know, and and I, I I try to be good and kind all the time. Mm. You know, but it's difficult in this world, and there's not so much negativity everywhere. Mm. You know, but everybody has to think. Yeah, what is their thing, and then live mm. that through. That yeah. I know, and then hopefully learn on the way. Yeah, right, um, right. Basically. A learning process and growing process, or at least it should be. I think it's it's exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully you learn. I've learned mega time yeah. about yeah. myself. Yeah, same. And when you learn about that, then you can reflect it, mm. and then you attract very good people. Like I said, you, they just show up. Yeah, new people into your life, and then it extends your network. Mm. Yeah. Of goodness, what I call the goodness. You know, yeah. nice new friends. You know, you talk yeah. and share sure, yeah. things. Nobody has to be right. That's the mm. key. Mm. If somebody's telling you I'm right, mm. that's an ego thing, totally. Mm. Mm. If somebody, if you don't feel good in somebody's presence, that is the first indication that something is wrong. Mm. You know? sure. We just have to relax, and we can, we can, you know, be have different opinions respectfully. Yeah. Know. Exactly. We don't have to be right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who is right at the end of the day mm. here? Yeah, yeah. Intentions need to be good, but then you need yes. to also think like a road to hell is full of good intentions. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs>